Damon, back again for the Raiders Cute Pie. Long before Richard Branson created airlines and spaceships, he envisioned Virgin Mobile. A phone company that would make ordinary experiences extraordinary. And get people what they want as fast as possible. They all thought he was mad. In the future, we'll be able to talk to each other with our thoughts. Right. Are you mental? It's just so simple, he thought. Why pay for minutes when it's unlimited data you really need? And while not all his dreams were embraced, he was driven by a higher calling. This is Richard Branson, and he's here to service you. Richard Branson, I know he offers some services, but he's willing to service you. Yo, yo, yo. It's Gold Tooth Gaming, so this video is all about Virgin published Super Nintendo games. And as everybody knows, Richard Branson has got his fingers in every pie. You were talking Coca Cola, media, music, money. Anything you can think of, Richard Branson's got his fingers in it, he absolutely loves it. And what I will be doing, I'll be showing all of the Virgin Super Nintendo published games. They're not all made by Virgin, but they're all published by Virgin. So this one is Battle Jockey. This only got a Japanese release. So all these titles that I will be showing, I did play, and these are my gameplay clips. And I'll be honest, I didn't have a clue what was going on here. There was well too much Japanese text, it felt like I wasn't even moving it, I'm not exactly sure to this day if I were moving. So yeah, I can't really comment on this one. I think I'd have to be uh, really fluent in Japanese to understand what was going on here. But yeah, enough of that one. Let's get on to the next one. Next up we've got Cannon Fodder. And we've got to have this next up because we're doing it alphabetically. Now this one was made for home computers, you can tell you've got a cursor. And it would actually work better with a mouse, definitely. But yeah, on this you move your cursor and then you've got a button to where you want to walk with that cursor. You've got a button to shoot, and then you've got another button where when you press it you can see a top down view to see more of where you are. And yeah, I want a massive fan of this back in the day. I remember it coming in video game store when I worked and I was like, what is this shit? Why would anybody pay £40 for this? It is absolutely boring. But, I don't know. I'm not saying it's exactly the most... action-packed game, but... Yeah, I can see why people would probably play it. I can't see it being a game I keep coming back to. But, yeah, that's what happens when you press top down, look, you see more at map, and it says I've got to kill so many of them. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll press cursor and then I'll walk to that point. As you can see, yeah, it's not very interesting, it's... But, yeah, I'm not exactly sure if it's got a fan base. Who knows? Cannon fodder. There's worst games out there. And I suppose if you're into Sims, you might actually like this. But yeah, enough of that one. I shall see you on the next one. Next up we have Cool Spot. This is an awesome platformer. And to believe that the Dot from the 7up franchise has got its own game, that is absolutely ridiculous, but it works. It still plays really, really good. And if you're into collecting retro games and you haven't got this in your collection I'd probably get it while it's still at a not too bad price because it is a really really good game honestly so brief explanation of this you've got to get so many of these uh, red coins or tabs or whatever they are when you get to somebody in a cage if you've got so many you can free them so on this playthrough I decided to take the top route keeping in the air, jumping from balloon to balloon. Um, yeah, when I get to the end, I obviously haven't got enough. 
up so I have to start hitting the ground which is sand, there's crabs after you, you can throw things at them. And yeah, it's a really, really good game, honestly. And I remember playing this years and years ago on my Sega Game Gear. And it's even good on that as well. As you can see, look, I need to unlock that cage, but I need, I think it was 60 of them. If you play it on easy, you'll need 30, etc. And yeah, I thought I'd explain about going to the floor because it's not all in the air. It's just what I decided to do. And yeah, if you haven't got it, get it while you can. It looks beautiful as well, it still plays good. An absolute cracker. So far this is in the lead. I'll see you on the next one. Next up we have Dino Dini Soccer. And yeah, many people did say it was a sequel to Kick Off 2. But I admit I wasn't a massive fan of the Kick Off series. Uh, I did think there were some really good football games on Super Nintendo. But yeah, these games didn't do it for me. I'm guessing they will have a big fan base. Um, a lot of these top down sort of soccer's do. Sensible soccer, I know that's got a massive fan base, and I know Kick Off. A lot of people used to like that back in the day. Yeah, it's just not for me. But yeah, what I'm finding from Virgins, they've got a really good mix of different games from what they published. So yeah, that's always a winner. But I'll see you on the next one. Next up, we have Jungle Book. And the best way I can describe this game is a really average platformer. It doesn't do anything really that well and it doesn't do anything really that bad, it's just kind of there. It is colourful and you can definitely tell what it's supposed to be when you see it. Yeah, graphics were decent for the time, but it kind of just is what it is. And I know a lot of people would have seen this before, so I'll just show you a little bit of gameplay on this one and then we'll get on with the next one, which is kind of a bit of a similar thing. So yeah, shall see you on the next one. Next up we have The Lion King, another Disney game. Yet again, it's a platformer. And when I mean this is average, this is really average. But I'd probably go to the lower scale of average. I played it for approximately five minutes and yeah, I'm really into platformers and I did feel, feel me then getting really, really bored. So yeah, I do feel that people would have seen this game as well, so we'll just show this very quickly. There's nothing much to tell, and we'll see you on the next one. Rendering Ranger R2 Right, just let me compose myself because I feel like screaming because this game is an absolute masterpiece. And when I am talking masterpiece, I'm not meaning it's good, I am talking a masterpiece. I remember this game coming into video game store when I worked in the 90s on Super Famicom import. Tried it, instantly fell in love. It's like a Contra, Turrican, that sort of run and gun style. And just look at it. Not only does it look amazing, it plays better than it looks. And I mean it plays better than it looks. The gameplay is so fast and fluid and responsive. I cannot honestly say I've played a Super Nintendo game where it plays this smooth. The people behind this must be so proud. Because for me, for no slowdown and no lag, and to achieve what we've achieved here is godly. It is honestly godly. The power-ups, the weapons, the bosses are absolutely humongous. And I used to rave about this game for years. I used to be like, yeah, have you tried rendering Ranger R2? People's like, no. Well, the video game store where I worked, they'd only got a few copies in. I got one of them myself, and I don't, can't remember who bought the others, but they never come back. And it's a game where I thought, people need to see this immediately. 
or sooner. Next up we have Robocop versus Terminator. Right. Now let me compose myself again for this one. This game is awesome. And I mean it's awesome. But I have got a few complaints with this game. But for me, they still don't take away from how much I love the game. And they should do. But they don't. It's, it's weird. Right. Love Robocop. Love Terminator. Love the style of this game. It reminds me of an old Sega game from arcades. I don't know. There's quite a few it reminds me of. I'll just throw out East Watt. Right, so that's take, love it, like the kind of game it is, I like how it plays, I like the characters, I like how dark and sort of like gritty the game looks. Right, now let me explain what pisses me off about this game. The controls are sometimes a bit unresponsive, a little bit clunky, to the point where you're thinking, I've just pressed up. You fucking what? I've just pressed fucking shoot. I've just pressed down. It's all a bit clunky, but it is a quality game. And I mean a master... Well, I'm not saying masterpiece, but it's good. Real good. Next up, we have Super Slapshot. Being from UK, I'm not that familiar with ice hockey. I'll throw that straight out there. And I've played a good number of ice hockey games. Um because it's quite easy to pick up, you know, you've got a hockey stick, whack puck into other opponent's goal. Easy, that's as much as I know. We don't seem too many rules, fighting, whatever. And, yeah, I put this game on, and I haven't played it since probably near enough release. And I thought I'd get five minutes. Next thing, they'd scored against me. I thought, really? I'm not having that. So I scored back. And then I'm like, right, I need to win. And it kept going on, and I played this game for a lot longer than what I ever expected. And it does play really, really well. It's fast, honestly, and there's just something about that type of gameplay where I do feel you could pick this up for an hour, have a few games on it, and you'd feel like you played it for five minutes. Especially if it's a bit of a battle like it was for me, you know, because I went down to one point behind and I was like, look, I need to get back. But yeah, I'd recommend this one as well. And that is weird, like Gold Tooth Game and recommending a hockey game. But yeah, I've got to say, it's really, really good fun. And that's what makes a change. So yeah, see you on the next one. Next up, we have Wolf Child. And I do remember this for Amiga and Atari ST. And I do remember releases on consoles. And I've got to say, the copy that I felt most proud of owning um, back when it were out were Sega Mega CD. But something about it were a new game want sparkling and it want really the best. But I just liked the case. I just liked everything about the Sega Mega CD one. And yeah, on Super Nintendo, it had got differences from Sega Mega CD, but for me, this is one of them games where it is what it is. It's hard to say, yeah, this game's better, this game's better. It was just there. And... I've got to say, it's honestly worth a go. So a lot of these young kids out there that might not have played this game or they might not have even seen it. I'm not saying rush out, go buy it, but it's definitely worth a play, you know? Because there was some good uh, Atari ST, Amiga games that are ported to consoles, and a lot of the time Amiga and Atari ST versions were better, but yeah, this does a decent job to be fair. And it's good how you can turn into a wolf and you can uh, obviously shoot things and you guy and you can punch things. It's, it kind of looks well as well. It's got that old sort of retro feel like they've made it now, thinking that that's what it would look like back in the 90s where 
yeah it's all the way around yeah it's pretty cool what do you see boss them what are we on with creepy little sausage next up we've got young merlin and yeah a lot of people were saying it was the next zelda and i remember it coming out and i'll be honest i really kind of didn't know what to think about it because it had been hyped up to this and hyped up to something else and it didn't fit in a category that i expected for me it's nothing like the Legend of Zelda. Graphics look decent, it kind of reminds me of like a point and click, if that makes sense. It's a very strange sort of like graphic, but yeah, it's alright. It's definitely worth a go. If you're into them RPGs and them sort of games and you've got a bit of time, it's definitely worth a go 100%. Uh, and it's not a bad title, but I would say majority of these version titles there's more good than bad which is surprising because when I had to come and think about what were released by Virgin uh, yeah that's definitely more good than bad and I want to thank everybody for watching this it's something different for me I will continue doing this next time I might do Capcom or Konami I'll probably have to do them in parts because there's a lot more games published by them but yeah I thoroughly enjoyed this and it's been good playing different games I haven't played for years so everybody keep safe keep sexy Peace.